Good afternoon, everyone. This is Jason Rodriguez here with Z Prime. Today, I'm joined by Carl Popham, our good friend from Austin Energy. Carl, how are you doing today? Well, I'm doing great, uh, Jason, all things considering. Uh, family is safe. Uh, team is happy. We're being all productive. Also, it was good to hear on the pre-show what you got going on uh, with your family. But yeah, things are going good here. Well, very good. Well, have a little little token of appreciation from your team. Thought I'd show that's right here. I keep it by my desk to remember the good work that Austin Energy is doing. I love it. We only hand that out to the VIPs, uh, Jason. So the fact you were selected in a very small group of individuals to get the electric greater than gas whoa, branding whoa, whoa, hat. Whoa, whoa. Now, to be fair, we'll give these t-shirts out like candy, uh, uh, but uh, the hats, that's VIP only. So congratulations on being shortlisted. Well, thank you. Thank you. And uh, so before we get into it, Carl, what is the latest and greatest you got going on at Austin Energy with the things you and your team are working on? Uh, well, we got a lot going on. It's, it's very busy. Um, we just released a few weeks ago a brand new uh, infrastructure tariff to include and to encourage fleet and infrastructure um, uh, deployments. Uh, I have a new 85 pound dire wolf in the background, uh, which is new uh, to our family as well. Uh, so, so he may be making a, an appearance. Um, we also just launched a few weeks ago, 2.0 of our Austin community EV online buyer's guide. So I don't know if you, your graphic uh, experts can do ev.austinenergy.com. Either that's going to be very awkward if I just don't have it with a CGI. Get it in there. But we encourage everyone to take a look, especially in Austin. It's trying to make it a one-stop shop to all things EV. And so 1.0 had great information, general inventory information. It aligns well with uh, kiosks uh, at some of the dealerships. But what 2.0 brings to the table is a real-time inventory feed. So it's just not the type of vehicles they sell or support. It's all the way down to the color and the trim levels, you know, all the way down to the bin. Uh, so we're pretty excited uh, about that. Uh, we're wrapping up some DC fast charging infrastructure hubs of our own, working with Cap Metro on their electrification. So just a lot of great, uh, very interesting projects uh, moving forward, uh, I guess, especially notable due to, you know, the pandemic. Got it. So let's get into some of the things you you see in 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 twenty twenty one happening. Uh, but before that, I, I would like to know, you know what has been your biggest electric electric vehicle surprise of twenty twenty. Hmm. Well, I would say one. It is related to electric vehicles. I'll tell you why. At least here in Austin is to the tune of $7.5 billion. So what does $7.5 billion have to do with electrification in Austin? Um, so the voters recently passed Prop A and Prop B around uh, improved mobility. So 7.1 billion is the Cap Metro Project Connect. So that includes light rail. It also includes an acceleration of their bus electrification project. So we're working very closely with Cap Metro. They already have several electric butts, uh, but buses in service uh, and um, we helped design with them a electric bus depot in North Austin that can support up to 200 electric buses. We launched a new tariff that they are looking at participating in, a pilot tariff that is pretty exciting in the fleet and infrastructure space. And so, and then also working with them on part of this bond also helps with uh, even their bike fleet. So uh, they just launched Metro Bikes or getting ready to launch. Um, that was formerly known as B-Cycle, this great bike, but they're turning it to a complete electric bike uh, company uh, or subsidiary of Cap Metro. So working with them on that. Um, so the reason why I was a surprise is, you know, I think we're, we're at a really potential tipping point and it was a good check on the pulse of the community is at this time, are we going to vote and make investments for improvements into the future? Or are we going to retreat because we're a little bit in a scared mode, if you will, and let's not bring anything new. Uh, let's be very careful about property taxes, et cetera. But both passed. 
And so B, Prop B is a little different. B is also exciting though, because it's about more micro mobility, sidewalks, walking, bike lanes. So you see an appetite for other ways of getting around as well as an appetite for light rail, electrified buses, you know, the bigger $7.1 billion package. So uh, I'm excited and uh, very hopeful uh, about our future. And maybe just saying I'm hopeful now is a surprise <laughs> towards the end of 2020. My yeah. mood is hopeful. Uh, I feel like we're trending nicely into 2021. Uh, everything from the positive reports of, of vaccines, uh, seeing some of the, uh, the new details coming out with some potential federal guidance on policies, and maybe that's more of a follow-up discussion. Um, you know, seeing more of an alignment with, with what we do here with Austin with support uh, and some pretty ambitious goals and plans being proposed by uh, uh, some new potential federal policies coming in line. Fantastic. So we're, we're on the challenges side, there, there's a lot to think about COVID, um, a lot of the new electrification efforts that are being launched across the nation. So what are you seeing as the biggest challenges uh, for electrification and, and maybe for the utility space in general? So I think the challenges overall reside around uh, really a, a sense of, of fear or hesitancy. You know, in a time of crisis, you really can go either way. You can double down or you can retreat. And so I think the risk is how much we're going to have a lot of investments to recover. We all know that there's major stimulus packages, packages and other investments. Now those investments are going to focus on trying to maintain or go back several years or really a chance to innovate what the future looks like. So I think that's the challenge of getting a consensus and getting something that really works um, for everyone and not just targeting winners and losers, if you will. Um, so how utilities adopt to that, I think how utilities innovate. I think for a lot of utilities, there's a lot of need for um, innovation now more than ever. Um, even shifts during the pandemic, like most utilities like Austin Energy saw a shift from uh, commercial accounts to residential. So you have a lot more people working from one to home and not going into their offices. So, you know, how does that impact the, the utilities? And so here at Austin Energy, what we did is we did some relief efforts to make sure those home bills don't spike up uh, too much that people are comfortable with. So there was a package to include participant in, in our, our customer assistance program, as well as removing a top tier off our electric tiers to make sure people weren't using so much new energy at home that now they're in you know, this tier five. So we cut off the tier five for a while. So we really wanted to try to stay true to our affordability goal and be very realistic about it. And to, especially during a time of crisis, be very conscious of any in, in impact to our affordability goals and uh, low to moderate income communities, especially you know, the more vulnerable populations. Great, so looking, you, you touched on, on several of this, but you kind of looked at the lens of, of what happened to utilities and also to society uh, in general, both on urban communities and maybe some of the rural communities. There's been lots of change in behavior in 2020 and it's going to go into 2021, but which of these do you see is going to have the most impact in either how we work, live, and play? And you kind of touched on some of that earlier too about really designing more walkable cities, incorporating a lot more mobility, a non-car mobility option. So post-pandemic, you know, putting your, your predictions hat on, which, which one of these things are going to have the longest impact from, from what we were just experiencing from the pandemic? Well, I think one thing people see a few things. One is the concept of one adult equals one car per household. So here in Austin, I'll reflect, we have about a million folks and we also have about a million cars. And I think people are realizing, especially in a pandemic and people working more from home, do we really need, you know, does a couple need two cars in the driveway? Um, so I think we'll see demand for, you know, still maybe for now having that primary vehicle, but maybe it makes sense especially with the new investments in Cap Metro and other transit options. So I think we could see that tipping point, if you will. Um, 
And so that's in synergy with a lot of things going on. So a big thing happening here in Austin is I'd encourage anyone with of interest in climate plan and climate equity to go to the city of Austin's draft proposed um, community climate uh, equity plan. Uh, so I'm a co-chair of the transportation electrification working group. There is about five working groups that covers everything from sustainable buildings uh, to policy, land use. So if you have an interest in anything like that and want to help shape Austin, that is still open for com uh, comments. So I think what we see there is more ambition in renewable portfolios. So we're seeing the draft goals right now, for example, for Austin Energy. Uh, I'll talk about two main goals. Bringing in our goal of being uh, our fleet having zero carbon emissions by 2035, which is our current plan, to bring that into 2030 to accelerate it. And we're already ahead of schedule of that 2035 plan. So I think it's actually very realistic, frankly. Um, we're getting closer every month. And another big goal specifically from, from the working group I co-chair is about vehicle miles traveled. So right now, today, less than 1% of all vehicle miles traveled is on the electric platform. Our goal is by 2030 to be 40% of that BMT. So how do we get there? It's not just replacing gas cars with um, electric cars and have that same business model. It's not taking a 12,000 mile a year car, which is parked 95% of the time, and you're gonna get all that benefits. It's really about capturing the high BMT market. Transportation network companies like Uber and Lyft, which on average a full-time driver can get 60, 75,000 miles per year, and then the next major goal is shared electric autonomous. So here in Austin, we have something called the Smart Mobility Roadmap, and it envisions a mobility as a service in a future that incorporates three core tenets, shared transportation, electrified, uh, and autonomous. And so those three synergies working together helps with congestion, pricing, safety, climate, NOx emissions, clean air. And so we think that is kind of the future for here. Well, cool. It's part of that planning process. Okay. I can only speak for myself. I, I, the, the proverbial we is me uh, based on uh, working with and talking to very smart people uh, here at the city and in the, in the industry. Thank you. Well, Carl, it's been a pleasure talking with you again, and hopefully uh, we can, we'll see more of these soon, or, or at least more of those, those guys uh, there. And hopefully we'll be hearing from Stevie soon too as, as what they're up to in 2021. I appreciate you joining us today.